Good morning. Um, welcome to Chennai. Um, it's a pleasure to welcome you all to Chennai. It's a land of uh, Tamil. It's the oldest, uh, one of the oldest classical languages. A land of tradition, culture, and knife edge politics. So, <laughs> so welcome to Chennai. So it's it's, um, it's somewhat of an abstract uh, talk that Dr. Bandari has asked me to give, but I, after having analyzed this. Um, I think it's very useful. So when I was in the US in a very high volume uh, robotic center, my goal was to come and replicate it here. But after having come here, I, I've realized that it's not that very easily possible unless we change some of our perspectives. So I'm from Apollo Chennai. We are currently around 500 robotic cases a year, um, looking to buy our second robot. Uh, but it was, was um, uh, not an easy journey. It took us about five years to come up to this level. So before we go ahead in high volume service delivery, I think there are three components that uh, we need to follow. One is strategy, surgery, and team. Out of which I, I realize here we've got people from government hospitals, private hospitals, corporates, and some of you who own, who own their own robots. But I think bits and pieces of each will be useful to all of us. So the surgery is the easiest part. Now, I, when I started out uh, with my robotic surgery fellowship, I thought this is going to be the toughest part, you know, the learning curve, the time that it takes to bring your learning curve down to respectable time frames and good outcomes. I thought this was the toughest part, but it is actually the easiest part. You know, we have to breach the learning curve before we start, and I cannot overemphasize the importance of a fellowship training. Um, and for instance, in a prostatectomy, think of OR times between three and four hours and a console time between two and two and a half hours. And we have to select a center that allows us to achieve these aims when we're doing fellowship and hit the road running when we start our own private practice. So in strategy, I'm gonna talk about four things, quality, volume, awareness, and cost considerations. Um, high volume, in health, this is a dictum. High volume in health care comes secondary to quality care. And in health, poor quality is not worth at any cost, whatever the cost. So these are dictums that we have to follow when we, whenever we're thinking of, of setting a program. And these need not be mutually exclusive. You know, you've got volume, cost, and uh, quality. The goal is to keep the bottom line intact. Um, one of the battles we had to fight when we started a program was the lack of awareness. For urologists, prostates probably form the biggest uh, volume. And we had a lack of awareness in, in amongst doctors, among the public in general. And the commonest treatment even five years ago here in the South was bilateral orchidectomy for um, cancer prostate. So our goal was to talk about prostate cancer, prostate, then prostate cancer, then the treatments available. And uh, one of the ways in which we thought we'd raise awareness was by starting a foundation called the Indian Prostate Cancer Foundation. Actually, we've got Dr. Chinnaswamy here. He inaugurated the foundation. And we've been trying to you know, generate a lot of awareness with public, doctors, general surgeons, general physicians to, to, you know, idea is to create awareness among people regarding the treatment options available. You know, previously, it was orchidectomy or irradiation. Surgery wasn't considered an option. Now we're able to offer a, uh, surgery with fantastic outcomes, and people needed to know about this. So this is again a program very close to my heart, protecting men who protect us. The foundation trains doctors free, uh, free of cost as well as looks after veterans uh, in our armed forces free of cost as well. So we also had to fight uh, um, certain doctors who felt that India is not ready for robotic surgery, it's too expensive and so on. Again, make people aware of what you do. That's point number one. And um, we have to do it. You know, not expect a corporate hospital or the marketing department to do it. It is our job as robotic surgeons to um, inform people. A you know, very thin line between advertisement and information. I'm asking you to give out information. So cost considerations, we've got to talk in the evening today regarding uh, frugal innovations in robotics. I'm going to touch upon this a lot when we talk about that. So, India, we, we Indians are past masters at uh, reducing costs in anything and everything. I'm not talking about reusing drapes or instruments. That's nonsense. So if it's not good for our parents, we cannot do it for our patients straight away. So we're not talking about reusing anything at all. I'm just staying 
other ways in which we can reduce cost when we're doing robotics. I just wanted to say one point here. Um, in frugality, operative time, instruments, and the surgeon fees are straight away under our, under our control. Any corporate hospital, they can't touch this, you know? So I'm suggesting that we fund our own learning curve when we're starting out with a robotic program. You know, these are under our control. Drop it down, make sure you do the cases. So you really can't expect a corporate hospital to subsidize your learning curve. It's impossible. It doesn't happen, maybe for a short term, but never on a long term. So it's up to us to go ahead and train ourselves first and come and do a procedure at an effective time so that we get the program running. So another important thing is keeping complications down. We, especially here, we cannot afford to have complications. So if you want to be good at your surgery, you haven't done a fellowship, get a proctor in. Get him in for 10, 12, we've heard Dr. Shem Shomashekar say it for 10, 12 cases. Get a proctor in for 10 cases. Make sure you breach your learning curve before you start and prevent any complications from happening. So. Other important point is, uh, Gagan already alluded to this, setting up a team. Mandatory, every aspect of the team has to be perfect. You're from your charge nurse to your, to your doctors, fellows, assistants, biomedical. You know, you can't wait in between for somebody to, something goes wrong with the robot. Get your biomedical person trained as well. So before I finish, some of, you know, when, when you're setting up a unit, running a unit, I've learned a lot from Dr. Ravi Kumar, who's one of the uh, top pediatric surgeons in, in this part of the world. And his goal was always, if you have a problem in the hospital or any attender calls, for out, calls out for help, the main concern should be that there are only two responses. There's a vocal response saying, I'm coming, and a motor response saying, I'm walking to the patient. So that sort of commitment, fortunately or unfortunately, all of us here in India are tackling in robotic surgery the top 33% uh, of patients who can afford to choose their doctors. You know, we're not talking about uh, people who don't have a choice, but our goal should be to even include them in our um, treatment protocols. So again, um, I'm talking about this, repetition is the mother of skill. If you have a large number of people in your unit, teach them one particular way and they have to master it before experimenting with something else. Everything has to be done according to protocol. This is not to dissuade innovation, but repetition till you get very good at it, and then you can change stuff. Again, practices and uh, advances and not trends. We do not know what a trend is and what an advance is. Advance is something that's proven benefit. Trend is a fad. You can come in, go off later. Right now we're doing robotic renal transplants, and uh, the final word is out, yet out um, for this. Let's see how it comes in future. So another important thing is we cannot have only one specialty or one or two surgeons doing maximum numbers. We need to encourage all specialties in a unit. In Chennai, we've got a lot of surgeons doing specialties from gynec, colorectal, head and neck, urology. Everything is being done. But it's not very good. You know, imagine only one surgeon is doing bulk of the work and he's got a finger fraction, he's out of action for six months. What do you do? Or three months, what do you do? It's not acceptable to have only one surgeon do a lot of work, get in all the specialities, and the hospital will see the benefit. And, and this is again uh, something uh, uh, close to my heart, variable pricing, a little bit of Robin Hood, you know, the rich can subsidize. It's common in India, we are a socialistic country, 3% of taxpayers subsidize 97% of our country. So I think it's acceptable in our practice to do that as well. And I'm gonna quickly finish. Ultimately, to provide high volume service, we need to maintain quality, deliver it at an affordable cost to everyone that needs it. And it involves consistently doing what's simple. And finally, when it comes to it, it's a question of attitude and not really your fingertip skills. Thank you very much. <laughs>